All right, what is going on guys? So in this video, I wanna share my current thoughts on training volume, and I wanna piggyback off a recent video uploaded by Jeff Cavalier called Workout Volume is Killing Your Gains. So last night I was reading through a recent article on the training volume threshold in the Mass Research Review, and it made me think of this video from Jeff because this new study over here from Barbalo and colleagues actually did find that higher training volumes led to significantly worse growth. Just five sets per week caused the most hypertrophy and 20 sets caused the worst. And at least for the pecs, literally killed some gains. So in this video, I wanna add some new evidence to the volume discussion here on YouTube, share some of my own thoughts and expand on Jeff's discussion of whether or not volume is actually hurting your gains and in which context that may or may not apply. First, I wanna do a super quick crash course on what we currently know about training volume leading into this new study, which on its surface does seem to contradict what the science has been saying so far. Up to this point, there's a lot of evidence showing that there's a clear dose response relationship between volume and hypertrophy. This was shown in a 2017 meta-analysis pulling together 34 treatment groups in 15 separate studies. And it pretty much just means that more volume causes more hypertrophy. If you increase the dose, you increase the response. However, there's also clearly a point of diminishing returns where you can keep doing more volume, but you'll see very little extra progress for it. And we don't know exactly where that point is, and maybe we never will because it's so individual, but for most people and most muscles, it's probably somewhere between 10 to 20 tough sets or working sets per muscle per week. In other words, up to 10 sets. If you add sets, you'll add muscle. Somewhere after 10 sets, things start to taper off. And then further down the line, there's another point where you actually might start losing muscle due to overtraining. And as of now, this is the prevailing model of training volume in the scientific community. Now, what Jeff was saying in his video is that a lot of people have become so fixated on volume that they aren't even really exerting themselves anymore. And I think that's a good point. I've also noticed this myself. Some trainees see optimizing volume as a way of getting out of applying appropriate intensity or effort. So Jeff was saying this lack of training intensity caused by an overemphasis on volume is killing your gains. So to kick things off, I wanna quickly cover this new study from Barbalo and colleagues, just so everyone's up to speed with where the science is on volume right now. Now this study was pretty simple. They split 40 young men with at least three years of training experience into four groups. One group did five sets per muscle per week, one group did 10 sets, another 15, and the highest volume group did 20 sets per muscle per week. They did a push-pull leg split, but it was only a three day per week split. So they were only hitting each muscle once a week. So they hit push once a week on Monday, pull on Thursday, and legs once a week on Friday. So this was pretty much a bro split. The exercises were the same compound movements for all groups. So the only difference was the number of sets they did per week on each exercise. And then after six months of training, it turns out that the lowest volume group doing only five sets per week saw the best gains and the highest volume group doing the most sets saw the worst gains. And I'll admit these results look a bit confusing at first. They really do seem to contradict the prevailing volume model we laid out at the beginning. In fact, at first glance, this study seems to point toward a model that looks exactly the opposite. The more volume you do, <laughs> the worse gains you get. However, there are two key factors we need to understand about this study first. First of all, even though the subjects had three years of training experience, their lower body strength suggests that they actually weren't very advanced at all. And other research shows that the more advanced you are, the more training volume you can benefit from. And the less trained you are, the less volume you need for progress. So if these subjects were less trained, maybe it's not so surprising that they responded best to the low volume protocol. And even though I do think that is a factor, I think there's actually something much more interesting going on in this study, which is a per session volume threshold. Basically the idea that in any given workout, past a certain number of sets, you don't get any extra benefit when it comes to hypertrophic stimulus from that workout. Now we don't know exactly where that per workout upper threshold is, but in the mass article, Greg Knuckles references some rodent research looking at the muscle protein synthetic response to training between one and 20 sets in a single workout. And the response seems to cap out somewhere around five sets. So let's just assume for the sake of argument, it's somewhere around five sets per body part per workout. Now let's say I had you go in the gym and do 15 tough sets for your chest in one workout. You probably feel pretty wrecked at the end. And somewhere around halfway through the workout, your quality of training is gonna start to decline as well. Your form would get sloppier, you'd move less weight, be less focused, and so on. But if I now told you to split up those same 15 sets across three workouts spaced throughout the week, now you could probably get much more out of those individual sets in terms of work quality and also not feeling as wrecked after the workout. So going back to the Barbolo study, remember the highest volume group was doing all 20 sets in a single workout and all of those sets were taken to failure. 
So I think that rather than supporting the idea that volume is killing your gains outright, I think this study just adds another layer of nuance. It doesn't only matter how much volume you should do in a week, but also how much volume you should do in a single training session. And this comes back to the importance of splitting up your training appropriately. Instead of just clumping all your volume in a single workout, it'd probably be best to split that workload up across at least two or more workouts throughout the week. So coming back to Jeff's video about whether or not volume is killing your gains, I think this latest study did in fact show that overdoing it with volume, especially in a single workout, can certainly impede your progress and potentially kill your gains. Remember that 20 set group actually lost some pec size. So in light of this new data, I wanna lay out a few situations where volume and effort can interplay with one another to either kill your gains or maximize your gains. So first we'll start with the scenario Jeff was talking about in his video where volume is high. So let's say 20 plus sets per week per body part, but effort is low. So you're consistently leaving five or more reps in the tank. That approach will kill your gains because most of that volume is junk volume. You're just not training close enough to failure. You're not stimulating the largest, highest threshold muscle fibers, and you just won't grow much from that training style. Next, let's look at a scenario where we say, okay, intensity is what really matters. So let's start taking every set to failure. So now effort is high, but you don't adjust your training volume. So now effort and volume are both high. This is also bad because you're so much more likely to overtrain. And this will also most likely kill your gains. And this was shown in that 20 set group from the Barbello study. Next, let's consider a scenario where we keep our effort very high. So we're still consistently taking sets to failure, but this time we drop our training volume down. Clearly the Barbalo study showed that this will lead to gains. In fact, I think this is a great low volume programming strategy for busy people who wanna have quick workouts. In other words, you can still make solid progress with just a handful of all out sets to failure for each muscle group each week. But if you're gonna take this low volume approach, the intensity has to be very high. Now, in my opinion, this isn't the most optimal way to train, but it can get you most of the way there and it certainly won't kill your gains. So for the right person, this approach makes perfect sense. Lastly, I wanna look at a fourth scenario. This is actually my favorite way to approach programming where you're trying to stay in this optimized zone of the volume gains curve. Generally speaking, that's gonna mean a moderate to high volume of training, again, fine tuned to your training status and so on, but also a more moderate level of effort where you're generally leaving one to two, maybe three reps in the tank and occasionally going to failure. And you'll just wanna tweak your volume as you assess your progress and recovery. And in my opinion, this is the best way to optimize gains and it can be easily fine tuned and individualized. So even though option three can certainly have its applications, I'd personally rather go with option four because pulling back slightly on effort won't significantly hurt your gains. We know that when it comes to muscle growth, the difference between going all out, all the way to failure and leaving a couple reps in the tank is very small, whether good or bad. So leaving those few reps in the tank has no downside unless you leave more reps in the tank than you should, but it does have an upside. It'll allow you to do more high quality volume, which if spaced and managed properly throughout the week, will lead to your best gains. So guys, before we wrap it up, I wanna do a quick shout out to all the Black Friday info for this weekend. So first up, everything on jeffnipper.com is gonna be discounted all weekend and on Monday. So if any of you guys are looking to grab one of my training programs or the new nutrition guide, you can get the discounted rate until Monday. Also, you can save 25% off a subscription to the Mass Research Review this weekend. So if you've been thinking about stepping up your scientific knowledge of training and nutrition, now could be the time to sign up. Also, Rise is doing a full home gym giveaway valued at $10,000. So I'll link that giveaway down below if you'd like to enter. And if there's anything that I missed, I'll make sure I put the details up here on the screen, or you can always check out my Instagram. I'll be posting everything over there, explaining what's going on for Black Friday. And I also realized that volume is a controversial and complex topic, and this video might just bring more questions than answers for some people, but I think that's okay. And regardless, if you wanna learn more, I'll have two other videos that I did on volume and other really helpful resources, like Dr. Mike Isertel's Volume Landmarks, linked down below if you'd like to read up some more on it. So guys, that's it for this one. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.